Today we're going to be upgrading the Ambernick Win 600. Watch on. So there's been quite a lot of upgrade videos in the Ambernick Win 600, but I'm going to do my own take on this. So you need to take out four screws. On the back here you see they're quite easy to find. One of them is behind that little sticker, and as you can see, on my sticker it looks like it might have been taken off once before, it turns out it has. So certain things you'll need, isopropyl alcohol, a toolkit with the right size bits in it. You will also need the following. Maybe I'll try and get them out of this little bag, I've got everything organised, you'll need your memory. So that's a 16 gig. We have a M2 SATA SSD, so one terabyte, and you'll notice it's a 2280, which isn't the right size. And in my case, a little torch is always handy for shining on your board just to just to see the little cables that little bit sharper when you're taking things off. You'll need some cotton buds, Q-tips. You've used that with the uh, isopropyl to clean off the GPU, of the APU, sorry. Uh, you need some thermal paste. Unfortunately, I couldn't find my Arctic uh, MX3, I think it was, or 4, so I have to use a TM30. And we need some VHB, and that's because we're using this extra long SSD. As you can see, it should fit across, and it's been recommended by some people online that I try it. And you're going to need also a, a guitar pick, just to pop open the case. And I'll give you a little hint later on on the best way to do that. So, get the screwdriver. Right, start with this one first, and as you can see, oh look, that just lifts right on up. So the person that sold this to me hadn't said in their advert that they'd opened it. However, it's not a big issue. I can tell you now, it's all going to go quite well in this video. I can just feel it in my bones. So let's get these uh, screws removed. Yeah, I never picked the best camera angle for doing this. See, my hands are getting in the way a little bit, but bear with me, this will only take a second to take these screws out. Now, be very gentle when you get these screws. Make sure you have the right bit. And be, they should come out really easily, these screws. They're only just the finger tight. So when you're tightening them back up, make sure you don't over tighten them because you can't easily strip the thread on these. It's just going into plastic. So just be gentle. It's mostly the plastic clips that hold the case shut. The screws are just there in case it takes any kind of knock uh, and stops the clips from popping open. That's why there's only four of them. I like the fact that they've not hidden these or made them a funny size. It is a little, um, it's not a Phillips head screw you need, it's a little, um, it's a little star shaped one I actually used which fitted fine. Now, here's a hint, start at R1, R2 to open the case, in between, there you go, it just pops in and it slides all the way across. Now this isn't my first attempt to open it, but this is far easy, far the easiest way to do it. And then also go down the same, down the side and along the bottom from the same side and it will pop up, pop up and really very easily. I saw some people struggling to open these and there really is nothing easier than if you start with it, the L1 R2, or the L1 L2 sorry. <laughs> right so we're inside, as you can see it's a little short SATA and I'm going to use a big long one because it just fits inside the case. Now we're going to come back to that. You notice that little um, rubbery bit next to the USB? That's going to come into play shortly. I'm going to work something out in a minute. Anyway, first thing, let's take out this 8 gig stick of glowy RAM. It's quite nice that it's a, a black card, but hey, we're going to change it with a green one, so nobody's going to see inside it. As you can see, here it is here. Let's pop that bad boy open. So this is 16 gig, it's uh, 3200 MHz. CL22. Could have spent a bit more money and got one that was maybe a CL20, maybe even a CL19. However, we've got what we've got. And as you can see, it is a 3050-256 with 8 gig of RAM. Okay, now let's remove this little M2. Now that's just a standard little Phillips, an M2 Phillips. Oh no, actually, what we'll do first is we'll start in the fan here. And I'm going to make a little mistake here. See these two little silver screws? Just ignore them. You don't have to take them out. Now I'm just making sure I've got a screw that fits really just tight in the screw hole. You don't want something that's too loose because you're at risk of um, 
destroying the thread or the head on the um, the screw. So that's two different sizes I've got because they are different size screws. Now I'm going to take out these two silver ones. Learn from my errors. If you follow this video, just leave these two little silver screws in. You don't need to remove them. There if you want to pop the actual fan assembly apart, I believe. So they don't really do anything. They're only just screwing in no more. So I apologize for the focus there. As you can see, it's rock solid. I'm just checking. Now at the back of this, there's um, some quite nice quality tape that it helps duck the air. Now that will give us a little bit of problem later on. But don't worry about it too much. We'll get there soon enough. So there's, I think it's three screws here to take off the fan so that we can get into the, the actual heat sink underneath, which has one heat pipe on it. And unfortunately, one of the screws is right underneath the fan. So we'll have to leave up the fan here. Now I'm a bit pensive here because I'm like, well, that feels a bit tight. Now, as you'll see in the bottom right, there's a, a little cable. I'm just lifting it up just to make sure I've not missed anything. And I'm looking around and I can see it's the tape at the top that's holding it on that right side. It's really tight. It's been fitted really well, actually. Can't really complain. So I'll give it a little bit of a stretch just to loosen it off a little bit. And then I'm not going to show this here, but I've just released it there. And I've popped out the power cable. And we'll just lift it back so we don't damage the tape anymore. You can see the flap of tape just sitting at the side. So there is uh, four screws, as you can see, holding down the heat sink onto the APU. So when I, when you put these back in, I usually do them in diagonals. You'll see that in a moment when, I've, when I refit it. And then I just put them just barely tight enough to hold it, and then I just make sure it's squared up, and then I just nip them up a little bit. You don't have to screw it so it's the point where you'll never get it off again. It just has to be firmly pressed enough that it will spread out the... Uh, paste and have a good a good bond so I've edited this video a little bit but what I will say is the video is about 17 minutes long and it really won't take you much more than that if you just take your time and as you can see here the person who had it before me didn't take off the original thermal paste it is like absolutely rock hard and dry so you want to get yourself some of your isopropyl alcohol, now I use 99.9% .9 stuff. I just put it in the, the cap lid. And use a, a little cotton bud. Because it's such a high alcohol content, it just melts it away. Look at that. Piece of cake. Not so good for the chunks around the side, they're a bit of a pain to get up. You really want to be careful with them. You don't want to go smashing it, the little chips around the side there, like I'm doing just now. Just try and keep it to the side. And it can't hurt to just freshen up your Q tip. Every pass. See a lot of people just turning it around and mashing more and more roundly. I'm trying to lift that off and it's just, it's just absolutely baked hard. So I'll give it a wee clean, take your time, plenty of time to uh, clean this off. You want to do as gently as possible. There you go, that's, that's looking pretty good. My last go over here, there we go. Spotless. And then onto the heat sink, which as you can see, I actually had a pretty good, pretty good bond. But again, it's absolutely rock hard. I'm going to use some, I've cleaned it off already. We're going to use some TM30. So a nice little blob in the middle. Everybody says about a pea sized bit, it's roughly about that. And then press down and pull away to the side. You'll leave a nice sized blob in the middle there. And I see quite a lot of people when they're doing their videos, they kind of mash it down and slide it around a bit. That always gives me the fear about, I want to get it down just perfect so that you get the minimum amount of um, thermal paste going over the sides. Just take your time. Like I say, this is probably the, the riskiest bit of any work on your Anbernic Win 600. Changing the memory, changing the the um, SSD, piece of cake. But it's definitely worth changing the thermal paste. Because it is absolutely rock solid. And I know I'm using TM30 and apparently it's not the best these days. Arctic Silver's better. I did have some Arctic Silver but I just couldn't find it. So TM30 will do. This isn't exactly a hot running chip so it'll be fine. And as I've shown, it's very easy to open this. Everything's pretty easily accessible. I don't actually know if you can buy replacement sticks. But as you can see on the, the left and right side, these sticks look pretty easy to take off. Just a little ribbon cable and two screws. Triggers as well look like they're quite easy to replace. The battery is relatively easily removable. And you'll notice I haven't actually unplugged it and disconnected it. But I did make sure it fully powered down. 
device before I started pulling these things uh, out. So you notice I've done the diagonals there. I haven't quite tightened them all up though. So this one's nearly tight. I'll just go down this one. I'll give it a wee turn until it's properly tight. Then do a crust and a diagonal. Then the next diagonal. There you go. See, there you go. Just, in, just finger tight and then a little bit extra. Not a lot extra. You want to be able to get it off again in future, but you want it just to spread out the thermal paste well. And then carefully line up your fan. And replace the three screws for that. Okay, that's one in. You also want to make sure that your power cable for your fan, you just make sure you get it above this screw point so it runs over the um, the heat sink but under the fan. And there's a nice little gap there just for it to run perfectly and then plug it back in. Unfortunately, it's just a little bit off, sh off shot here. So uh, I won't actually show you how um, how to plug the cable back in. It's just a very, very small connector, four wire. Just line it up. What I do is I use a screwdriver with a fine edge just to help line it up. And then just push it home with a, the edge of a fingernail. Or you could use your um, your guitar pick just to just push it in that little bit. And they slide in really easy. They come out easy as well. Okay, so I'm putting in these two little silver screws that I took out of the start incorrectly. So we're already about 12 minutes in. We've done the hardest part of the job. We're onto the, the easiest part, clipping in the memory. So our next thing to do. And that is extremely easy by the way because it's it's just a standard laptop one. Oh, we're going to take out the um, SSD now, the M2. Now remember, this is a SATA M2, not an NVMe one. And as you see, it's got two teeth. Whereas that, uh, well, that's got a two teeth one as well, you see. And now it's a much bigger unit, as you can see, double the length. But look at this. It fits in. And it's like almost perfect, but actually, hang on there. Just move this little bit back and look at that. There's a little indentation on this USB sponge. And it just sits in there and it's, it's absolutely perfect. Now, I was going to use a little bit of VHB tape just to glue it down, but I don't have to. Now, I can see this has been used for a wee while now, and, it, and it's fine. It's not moved an inch. You get your memory and just push it down. You should just click in. There you go, both sides popped in at the same time. Brilliant. So that's basically the job done. We're just going to flip it over. And what will happen now is your <laughs> L2 and R2 will probably just fall off. Now, the good thing is they, they just... There's a little guide for them, just clip straight back in, very easy. Now normally you wouldn't power these on, but the fan everything's attached, it should be okay. We're just going to turn on, make sure it's booting up okay. And we're going to go into the BIOS. There you go. So you get in the BIOS by pressing the on button. As soon as it, the white light comes on the front, push the down on the volume and you'll get your boot drive popping up. And as you can see, the Intenso, one terabyte drive has popped up already. And we can see we've got 16 gig of RAM. Which is good news. So we'll go across and we will quickly check if we have got the right memory timings so you go down to AMD CBS in the settings menu and then you go down to UMC common options and in the memory mapping you get a little warning here that's fine just go down and press OK I accept and you can see clock speed is set to 1600 megahertz which is half of 3200 megahertz and it's DDR double data rate so that's, that's the setting you need. And we'll just come out of there just now. Basically, we're done. It's just reassembly now. Now, it says prepare an automatic repair, and that's just because I'd, I cloned my SSD. I, I rebuilt the internal SSD just a, two days ago, and I used Macrium Reflect just to quickly clone the drive across. Now I still have that working 256, so if anything goes wrong with one terabyte, I can easily switch back to the 256. So that's my backup, so to speak. Now on this one terabyte, I think at some point I will probably wipe it, we'll put on, we might dual boot with Windows, and also with SteamOS, and we'll definitely be testing out Battlesera. Although we might do that from a USB, since that seems to be common practice. 
And as you saw there, Windows was booting up fine, so let's get us powered off. Let's get it reassembled. So, I'm just going to look here just to make sure I've got my L's and right L and my arm on the right sides, which I haven't. So there's a little hole there, just at the top of the case, it just plops in there perfectly. And as you'll notice, it's been mentioned about these, these uh, triggers, that they're more actuated on the edge, and as you can see that there, because it is basically hinged in, at the one side. There you go, just hinged down the side. Which helps a little bit with the... Um, oh, upside down. Yeah, that's better. Which helps a little bit with the placement of the um, analog sticks, which, you know, as we know, is a bit poor. So, clip along the top edge first I found, down the sides, and then do the back. There you go. That's that easy. It's now all back together and time to put the screws in. Now as you can see my unit here has got a couple of tiny little light screws, well little scratches sorry on the back here. Really nothing, nothing major. Uh, I'm actually really impressed with the condition of this 1600. I, I guess the person who sold it on to me, they just weren't impressed with the performance. I have to say, I've been doing a lot of testing. I'll be sharing some of those findings very soon. I have seen very small performance improvements. But what I'll do is I'll share games that, as I come across them, that I know work well on the Win 600. Obviously, we're not going to be testing, well, we maybe will, but God of War isn't going to run at usable frame rate. You will see quite a lot of people posting videos with the Win 600 showing gameplay, and it looks okay. But nobody ever seems to show actual performance metrics on screen. So I will be doing that. The only time I won't be able to show you that is with Vampire Survivors, which is a, a very strange use case where it just won't let you have any performance indicator up on screen. Even the, the built-in Xbox the performance metrics just come back blank. But I will say there's a little surprise coming up with Vampire Survivors shortly. So here we go. We're, um, we're almost done. This video is almost finished. And I, I'm can only say thank you for watching this far through the video. I really hope this video has helped you in uh, the disassembly, the upgrading, and the reassembly of your Amber Win 600. And like I say if, in all my videos, if you like what I do, please like, share, and subscribe. And as you can see here, we've booted up into Windows, and you can see we have 16 gig of 3200 megahertz DDR4. And if I click on the GPU, you can see it's, it's still got two gigabytes set to dedicated, and I will change that in the future episode to four gigabytes and I may change it to a different setting as well. I will say there has been a slight performance improvement given that a little bit of extra memory. But I'm quite pleased with that output so thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.